Hello everyone, welcome back to another class of DSG models. This is class number five. My name is Juan. Today I'm going to be talking about how to write the dynamic equations in Stata. Recall this is a series of tutorials where we are going through how to solve a real business cycle model and how to write the dynamic equations in Stata and be able to find the steady state impulse response functions and also get uh, out of sample forecast. I would like to let you know there is a link in the description where you can download the PDF with the dynamic equations that we are going to be writing in Stata. You can download that for free. And also there's in the link an option where you will be able to buy the Stata do file that comes with the slides. It's going to come with a paper where I have solved all the maths and it's going to include basically all the information that you need to be able to estimate these type of models. So well, then let's, let's, let's begin. Let's start to solve the dynamic equations in Stata. Before we can get into the software, we need to understand some commands and some things in Stata. So you will be able then to write the equations on your own and also will be able to understand the topic. It's very important to know as well that older versions of Stata does not allow or does not uh, provide the DSG commands, so you won't be able to estimate uh, DSG models in Stata if you have, for example, Stata 14. With Stata 15, I am not sure that you have the nonlinear um, estimation method. I'm sure you do have the DSG command, but I'm not sure if you have the nonlinear command. Um, but certainly, if you have Stata 16 or Stata 17, you will be able to follow through this tutorial. So it's very important. The first thing that we need to be able to solve a model is definitely to have the dynamic equations of our DSG model. As you know, in our previous tutorials, we have covered step by step how to get to all the dynamic equations. So it's very important that you watch those videos. So those dynamic equations can be linear. That means that you have get to the competitive equilibrium and then you have linearized the dynamic equations. So in that case you are going to be using the DSG command in Stata. However, as I mentioned Stata 16 uh, for sure um, or Stata 17 as well, you have the nonlinear estimation option where you don't need to linearize the dynamic equations. That means that the, the model uh, the dynamic equations can be nonlinear in variables or parameters. And in this case, we are going to be using the DSG NL command. So you are telling Stata that this is a nonlinear um, nonlinear model. Since the dynamic equations in our model are not linear, we are going to be talking about the DSG nonlinear command. For you to have an idea what Stata is doing is linearizing the model by taking first order approximation to the model's equation at the steady state. So Stata is doing an approximation, it's, go, it's linearizing the model for us. This is going to be giving us the flexibility to write the dynamic equations in any order that we wish. Just to give you an example, suppose you have r times x equals y, then you can write that equation also as x equals y over r. So this is the type of freedom that we have. You can write the equations any how you wish, all right? But that is going to require them for us to specify some options. So then Stata knows how it should treat each of the variables in the model. The options I'm talking about is exostate, endostate, observed, and unobserved. I'm going to be talking about exostate and endostate options in the next slide. However, observed and unobserved, what it means is that if you have a variable for which you have real data for, you can include it in the observed options. However, if you don't have uh, real data for that variable, then you are going to be including it in the unobserved option. Let's see what are the kind of variables that we have in Stata and we will need to consider. So there are three types of variables. The first one is going to be what Stata calls the control variables. These type of variables, they don't contain shocks. They are determined by the system of equations in the current period. These, these variables can be observed or unobserved. Then we have state variables. The state variables do contain shocks, 
those uh, subject to shocks are exogenous state variables and they go under the options exostate. Remember, I mentioned this option before. So basically, the state variables that are uh, subject to shocks, they are um, considered exo an exostate option. Now, if we have a state variable that is not subject to a shock, then it's going to be called endogenous state variable. And it's going to go under the options endostate. The state variables are fixed or exogenous at a given period, and they are always unobserved. Finally, we have shocks. So these are the three types of variables that we will need to specify in Stata. Control variable, state variable, and shocks. Just as a reminder, there, there must be as many dynamic equations as state and control variables. Yes, we are finally in Stata. This is a great time because we have finished solving the model. We have the dynamic equations. We have talked about how Stata works when we have to use the different commands that I have already specified in the previous slides. So now we are in a good spot to write the equations. There are three things you need to know. The first one is that in Stata, you will need to define the data and also you will need to define or set a time variable. That's going to be the step number one, which we are going to be talking about in the next tutorial because it involves using data filters like, the, for example, the HP filter. So that's something I'm going to be covering in the next tutorial. The second thing that we need to specify in DSG models uh, in Stata is the constraints. The constraints are basically the parameters which are calibrated. And finally, what we need to specify in Stata is the dynamic equations, which are the equations of the model. So let's begin then talking about the constraints. In Stata, when we are talking about constraints, we are talking about the parameters involved in the model. In order to write this, we're going to type constraint, then the number of the constraint, in this case, let's start with number one, of course, underscore B, you open a square bracket, and inside you're going to type the name of the parameter. In this case, it's beta. This is going to be equal to, of course, a value that we have to assign, that we have to calibrate. I'm going to be talking about how to calibrate the model in the next tutorial along with the setting the data and the time variable, just because it involves a long steps to explain how calibration works. So I'm going to be explaining with details that in my next tutorial. But for now, what you need to know is the syntax of how you write the constraints in the model. And then I would like to give a label to this. You don't need to do this. This is just so you know what you are doing. So I'm, I'm writing two bars like this. Uh, you can write the first is then the first um, constraint that we have is going to be the intertemporal discount factor which can be located, if you don't know what this is, remember this was in the households. The same way that you wrote constraint one, you're going to be writing constraint two, three, and four. The constraints that we had in the model, remember, were the alpha, that was the input share parameter, that's in the first production function, delta, which is a depreciation rate, it's in the first production function as well, and then gamma, which was the leisure share parameter, that was in the household's utility function. Now let's see how we're going to write the dynamic equations of the model. So in order to write the dynamic equations of the model, the first thing that we need to do is to tell Stata that we are working with a nonlinear model. So remember the command was DSGE-NL. Then the syntax is the following. Each of the equations has to go in brackets. And at the end of the brackets, you're going to write three bars like this. So what this is telling then Stata is that you are done writing the first equation. So let's start then writing the first equation, which is the first equation is the national accounts equation. So we are going to write it like this. Uh, output is equal to consumption plus investments. And just because I would like to not have everything tight, we can include a space there. That's not mandatory, but you can do that as well. Let's write now the second equation, which is the capital equation. Remember the syntax. As always, you open a... a parenthesis, and then you will have to finish with the three bars like that. I'm going to write just a label. You don't need to do this. I'm just giving a, a label. And in brackets, we are going to write 
first we have a kt plus one what you need to know is all the t plus one variables in stata you need to write them with an f so it's going to be f dot and the k what you're telling stata as again with this f is a forward operator it's just you're using the future um, value the t plus one then we have investments plus you need to open brackets the syntax you have to write it all the same that in the equation okay so one minus and all the parameters in the models need to be written between curly brackets so type one minus delta and then times the capital very very important make sure that you're very careful with the brackets curly brackets because if you make a mistake then you're going to be 20 hours trying to figure out where you messed up with a parenthesis so be very careful now let's write the Euler equation for the Euler equation similarly remember the syntax we open the parenthesis we finish with the three uh, bars like that and we write Euler equation I'm just giving the label you don't need to write this label this is just something personal now you're going to open brackets and what you're going to do here is remember we have the consumption plus one so we need to write f dot c perfect you know you're an expert now divided consumption space equal to space again and now what you're going to do is we're going to open a parenthesis we're going to open curly brackets and you're going to type beta okay uh, let's see here we come to the end times we open another bracket and it's one plus then we have the forward rt plus one okay so f dot r minus and you know as well that you have to write each of the parameters inside curly brackets so there we go then we are done it's very important you take a look see how it's very easy to have so many brackets look at one two three parentheses uh, curly uh, curly brackets um so be very very careful as i mentioned because you make a mistake and then you're going to be forever since you already know how to write the equations i went ahead finished writing all of them the last one that i didn't write because i want to go with you and explain to you how we're going to write it is the shock so we have remember an equation for the shock that we have written so i'm going to show you how to write it in stata we are going to similarly as always you open the brackets you finish with the three bars like this we are going to call this equation eight and we can call it the shock and let's see product in productivity productivity there we go so the equation is remember it starts with the logs so we're going to write log open parenthesis the forward operator and then we're going to call this a equal to remember now we have a parameter that is the row this parameter will need to be estimated and we will put underscore a because that's the parameter that is associated to the technology shock or the productivity shock which we have called a times logarithm of a and that's all that's the end of the equation I'm going to just here do the following so we have everything in line and we have finished writing the dynamic equations the last thing that we need to do is now to write the options in stata remember because we are working with non-linear models we need to just clarify stata what each variable is in our model I'm going to type an enter here comma very important don't forget that and the first thing you're going to write is how many constraints we have so the constraints goes from one to four as you can see in here we have four constraints so that's the first step we have already clarified to stata how many constraints we have the second thing we have to clarify stata is we have any observed variable remember that only control variables can be observed and in this case our variable observed is going to be the product the gdp of usa we're going to be using real data for the USA so that's going to be our observed variable next we have to specify the ones that are unobserved so you have to type unobserved and then we're going to write all the rest of the control variables so what are the rest of the control variables they are consumption the returns the hours worked by the families 
the wages and investment. Finally, there were two other options that we need to clarify. The end of state, remember we talked about that in the slides. So the end of state is basically the uh, state variable that is considered endogenous and is not subject to a shock, which is going to be the capital in this case. And then we have the exostate option, which is the variable that is a state variable, exogenous and subject to a shock, which of course, as you already know, the variable in our model that we is subject, uh, that is the shock, is going to be the productivity. So there we go. We have written now the constraints, observed variables, unobserved variables, end of state, and exostate. So that is perfect. So this is going to be all for today. We have done a great advance. As you can see, we have talked about how to write and define the constraints, how to write the dynamic equations in the model. I would like to let you know that there is a link in the description. Remember, you can buy the do file if you are interested in this. You can also get the slides and the paper. Everything comes together in a, in a, in a folder. And I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you would like to keep getting notifications anytime that I submit a new video. I'm going to keep teaching how to estimate the DSG models. Um, I'm going to be talking about other type of applied time series models. So there's many things that are, are coming. So if you are interested in that, please feel free to subscribe. Feel free to leave any comments if you have any, or if you have any questions, you can send me an email to the link in the description as well. Thank you very much for watching and take care.